morning once again. Good morning to all of you. This is the second video on class 10 OT. Today we are going to take le prose lesson number 3, speech by Severin Suzuki. So, speech by Severin Suzuki, what is this chapter all about? This chapter, it is not a fiction, we are not going to learn about a story here. But this chapter is a speech, a 6 minute speech that silenced the world. So, the protagonist here, the main character in this chapter, speech by Severin Suzuki, is Severin Suzuki. So, let's learn about our protagonist first. Let's learn about Severin Suzuki first. Who is she? So, Severin Kulis Suzuki was born, was born on 13th November 1979 in Vancouver, Canada. Her mother's name is Tara Elizabeth Kulis, who is a writer, and her father, David Suzuki is a geneticist and an environmental activist. So, when Severin was 9 years old, she set up an organization called the ECO. When she was 9 years old, she set up an organization called ECO, which stands for Environmental Children's Organization. So, what is this organization all about? What is the main purpose? So, the main purpose of this organization, ECO, was to, give, was to give children a voice to express their concern for environmental issues. Okay, in 1992, when Severn was 12 years old, she and other members of the ECO, Environmental Children's Organization, raised money for them to attend the Earth Summit, which was supposed to held at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. So what is this Earth Summit? This Earth Summit is a gathering where all the leaders of the countries discuss ways of protecting environment and preserving the Earth's biodiversity. So now when we talk about, when we talk about the Earth Summit and the leaders of the UN countries, what is this UN countries? We have 195 countries in the world, out of which 193 countries are a member of the United Nations. And when we talk about the country, our country India is also a founding member of the United Nations. India signed the UN Charter on June 26. India signed the UN Charter on June 26, 1945 and officially became the member of the United Nations on October 30, 1945. October 30, 1945. So we, our country India is also a member of the United Nations. Now, like I have said before, seven and other members of the ECO attended this Earth Summit and made a moving speech expressing the anxiety of children and the ways adults were exploiting the environment. She started her speech by introducing herself and saying that she was speaking for the future. She was speaking for ECO, Environmental Children's Organization, which she herself formed. She also said that they were a group of 12 to 13 year olds trying to make a difference in the world. In her speech, Severn said that coming up, coming up there, attending the Earth Summit, she was fighting for her future. She was there to speak for all generations to come. On, she, was there, she was there to speak for all the generations to come on behalf of the starving children around the world whose cries go unheard, went unheard, and for the countless animals dying across the world, dying across the planet because they have nowhere left to go. People have snatched their homes and shelter by cutting down the jungles. Cutting down the jungles or exploiting the environment. In her speech, Severn talks about the concern of children for the global ecological crisis brought on by the adults in their attempt to modernize the world. She said that the present generation that present generation of children is perhaps the first to see the extent of the damage done to the environment, done to the environment, and to realize the effects, to realize that that particular effects cannot be repaired or undone. 
Many species of plants and animals are already extinct, having lost its struggle for survival in the polluted air and water. So Severin Suzuki said that in her life, in her life she has dreamt, she had dreamt of seeing the great herds of wild animals, jungles and rainforests full of birds and butterflies. But now, seeing the present situation and present condition, she wonders that she wonders if they will even exist for her children to see in the future. Severin Suzuki said that the only solution to this crisis was to stop the was to stop exploiting the delicate ecological balance. And that can happen only if all the nations come together, work together and consider themselves consider themselves as a global community striving to make the world a better place or striving to leave the world a better place for their children to live in. She please the adults, she please the adults gathering in the Earth Summit that the world should work together. The world should come together and work together towards one single goal. And the goal should be to make the world a better place for the next generation to come or to make the world for their children to live in in the coming future. In her speech, Severn also used examples of some countries like the developed northern countries. And she said that there are more than enough in that developed northern countries, there are more than enough of all the necessary things needed for the survival for the people. But still then, those people are afraid to share. They are afraid to let go of some of their wealth and help the needy. Two days ago, there in Brazil, several say that she was shocked when they spent some time with the children living on the streets. One child from the street told them that if he was rich, if he was rich, he would give all the street children, all the street children, food, clothes, medicines, shelter, and love and affection. She wonders that when a child on the streets who has nothing to give is so willing to share, is so willing to give everything, then why are we, why are those people who have everything still so greedy? and still so unwilling to share to the needy. Severn also added that if all the money spent on war by the country was spent on finding environmental issues and problems or ending poverty and also finding treaties, then, the, then this particular earth would be a wonderful place to live in. Severn said that in kindergarten at school, they were taught by the adults to behave well in the school, not to fight, not to hurt other creatures, not to create problems, not to be greedy, but to share, work things out, and respect others. And then now she questions, she questions the adults that, she questions the adults present at the summit that why do they go out and do the things that they tell the kids not to do. She said that as decision makers and policy makers, parents or adults are responsible for the choices that create their children's future surroundings. Parents should be able to comfort their children in all the situations and they should be able they should make their children their first priority. And parents can do that. And parents can do that or can make their parents as their first priority by following what they have preach to their children what they had taught to their children and letting their own actions reflect their words. Severn concludes her speech by pleading the adults present there, by pleading the adults present there to practice the sense of accountability they teach their children and to provide the children the security they expect from adults. With this, we come to the end of the chapter. I believe that this video will help you out in understanding the chapter. And I also would like to request all my dear students to please open your book, go through your textbook, read the textbook for more and better understanding.